know if it's morning for you, but it's morning for me. So I didn't even realize it, but I'm kind of matching. It doesn't happen very often. But uh, so today I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about kind of a great that one of the craziest but coolest experiences of my life. So several years ago, I'm talking like maybe seven, eight years ago, kind of hit like a rock bottom period in my life where, um, you know, if this was before I went traveling and was homeless for a while, it's kind of the leading up to point to that, that kind of ultimate climax before just like going. And, um, so we were, we spent about two weeks in the woods and just kind of getting away. Like we were kind of, Bone and I were kind of at a point where we just like had kind of lost everything and everything had kind of fallen through. Um, and me particularly, I was like at my, at a really, really low point. Um, I lost a baby is the truth of that. I can just, this is my channel. I can just be open. So I lost a baby. And after that, you know, our, our life was just not ready for that and not, not stable. And it really shook me up because up until this point, um, like I, I didn't think I wanted kids. I didn't think that I wanted marriage. This is before we were married. You know, I didn't, I didn't think I wanted any of that. Um, I always wanted to be like an independent and, you know, self-sufficient. I didn't want to be codependent and, you know, yeah, I somewhat am, um, on like my husband, but yeah, not as much as you think. Like I value the individual reality of myself and my relationships and stuff. And like one of the things that one of the reasons I'm going through all this healing journey is gaining my independence back and my self identity, not so wrapped up in anyone else, including him. So, you know, we, we just kind of hit rock and bottom. We had, I'd gotten pregnant and then lost the baby and it was just a devastating, as you can imagine thing. So we dipped out and we had lost our place to live as well. So like think that th this was like the spiral down. I think this was probably 2012. Or maybe, yeah, I think it was 2012. So, which astrologically was a crazy year, right? If you think back to year 2012, I'm sure it probably wasn't maybe hunky-dory. At least if you're close to my age, I'm 28. Uh, so, <clears throat> we went to the, the woods. We spent two weeks. And see, the thing about Washington State, I live in Washington in the U.S. So, we have a lot of mountains. I am very close to the, the mountains. And... Um, it's a very common thing. I mean, there's not a whole lot to do around here other than go to the river, other than go to the mountains on the weekends, other than go be with your buddies and entertain your damn selves. Because, you know, I, I don't live near Seattle or any of the huge big cities, nor would I want to. I'm not a city girl. I'm a woods girl. I like the woods. <laughs> you figure that out by now, then that's, that's for real. So, uh, anyways, I was in the woods and I am a book. I mean, again, you, you're, if you're watching this then you probably are at least familiar with my blogging and realizing that I like books, I like science. And most of the books that I read are not, I can't remember. I think the last set of nonfiction or fiction books that I read was the rereading the Harry Potter, Potter series for like, you know, the seventh third time or whatever. <laughs> like, uh, I just like to dip into that world occasionally and just like alternate reality myself. Um, but I think that's like the only like fiction that I've read in a really long time. And that even was like three years ago. So anyways, my point is I read a lot of books, but they're mostly, they're mostly science or spirit based. So, or self-care based, um, body, mind, soul, you know, that's where I'm at. So emotions and psychology was just a huge interest. And I had gotten this book, The Molecules of Emotion by Candace Pert book. I had watched and um, admired and like, you know, uh, gotten into like down the rabbit hole and those kinds of, um, like science, those, the scientists and the, that research, that realm really interests me. <laughs> so I was exploring that more and I knew that Candace Pert was one of the authors in there. She's actually one of the leading, um, scientists and doctors, uh, that have, has a lot to do with peptide research and has a, can, can take a lot of credit for helping us understand how to, um, for drug addiction and stuff like that, um, understanding the emotions as peptides really opened up the door for the emotional causes behind diseases such as addiction is where she started. 
and she had, she's had a hard journey. Now she's at the front force and really like leading, a, you know, a really emotional spirit journey of that. And so anyways, her first book was Molecules of Emotion. And I had gotten this book, I think from my mom, I had tried to read it a couple of times, but I do this thing with books where like timing is everything. So I'll pick up a book and I'll put it down like a million times. Like I'll read, I'll read the first two chapters, like five or six times. And it just depends on what other books I'm reading because I like to l read books that kind of like meet somewhere in the middle. Like maybe they, I, they help my understanding to help understand them, like each other. Like I, I try and match up books and read, not that are similar, but that like synchronize well together in some way, even if they're off topic, like in my brain, you know, I'm looking for answers to why you read books that are nonfiction. You know, you're, you're learning about things that you're interested in, looking for answers, you know doing research so anyways I picked up this book like a million times but while I was in the woods for that two weeks I had a lot of time to sit there and you know get through that book and I was like at halfway and like I could tell that the molecules of motion book I will relate is as much a personal story as it is the science and the understanding of her work so it's a very personal read it's a very personal understanding of what scientists really go through in this day and age because science isn't really science when science is judged you know the the accuracy the blah blah, blah like the system like there's so many loopholes that like the different systems in science don't agree and so some of this science does get published and some of this doesn't and like who makes that decision of like what science is real like science is science anyways so her personal journey um is especially as a woman in this field um was rough and so i had gotten through you know like halfway through the book and could really tell that like she had set your set up the reader to understand the science and understand herself and her story so that what she says next like it makes sense because getting to like the big picture and i'd really enjoyed it so anyways i was in the woods and i was really starting to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm finally going to get some of the answers that I've wanted my whole life, like my whole life leading up to this about emotions, about thoughts, about the mind, about the body. Like, oh my gosh, I'm like, this is, this is what I'm, this is what I'm looking for. And I was again, in a really depressed state of mind. So like my emotional state was, and my mental state was of high concern for myself because I'm an optimistic, happy person and being this low for me didn't suit me. Um, or the life that I wanted to live. You know, I was really questioning, like, where, what, do I, what do I really want? Like, I didn't think I wanted to be a mom. I didn't think I wanted to marry someone. Like, I didn't think that that's what I... So anyways, this is the mindset that I was in. I was reading this book, sitting there, and I can see this in my mind so clearly. So I'm reading the book. And all of a sudden, you know, as, as I'm, like, anxiously reading, like, anxiously trying to get to, like, oh, my God, I know my answers are in here, right? And all of a sudden... I just hear this like booming, loud, overwhelming voice. You are not supposed to have the answers yet. Like really like, whoa, right? That's not my voice. That wasn't my voice. What did that like? Not that it came from outside, but it came from inside. Like what, what, what was that about? Again, you are not supposed to have the answers. You are not supposed to have the answers. Three times. You are not supposed to have the answers. And it was like this overwhelming, like, oh my gosh. Whoa. And so I, I was shaken. I was shook up in the woods. I looked around. Bowden wasn't nearby. We didn't have dogs yet. Like, I was just like, wow. Intense. And so I, I, I kind of rubbed, I kind of like tried to sink myself, psych myself back out and like continue reading anyways after a few minutes, you know, like what else am I going to do? Like, I'm at least going to try. And as hard as I could, I didn't hear the voice again, but as hard as I could, I just did that thing where like you read the pages and you just, I, you weren't actually reading them. So you have to like go back and you're like, wait, I didn't get any of that. And I must have spent probably a frustrating five, 10 minutes trying to read through the book and not being able to. Like, phys like mentally not being able to. So I had to put that book down. I didn't finish that book until I was on the road traveling with my friends about a year, um, about six months later. 
Um, and I was able to finish that book on that trip. By the time I got home from my traveling, I had fully understood and, and read that book and began to really start to like come out. Not, I mean, I, I ditched the depression in the road. That was easy. It was that coming home and that full understanding of like having the full scope of the answers that I needed at that time. Um, and so I guess this just attests to, you know, the power of time, the divine timing of understanding your life purpose and the answers that you deserve to have at the time that you will understand them completely. And that's something that I think I've really struggled in the past with understanding of just like, well, I want to know. I want to know. But would I understand it even if I was told? To a certain extent, there's lots of things that I don't learn. First off, I got to go back and have the right, ask the right person, ask the right question, ask, you know, get the right book by the right author, get the right science article, not the wrong science article. So anyways, um, I just want to share that story and, uh, it's a personal one. It's, it's one of those weird ones of just like weird life moments. And like, it just feels good for me to remember in this moment, you know, like that's why that book for me is so, so, so important. And I'm going to continue to refer back to it because there's some power in there of understanding and the, of the science of emotions. So highly recommend it. It's down below. Um, if you enjoy these sporadic blog blogs that I do, please subscribe. Uh, but more importantly, if there's some big stuff going on on uh, my blogs. So lovinglifewithlee.com. See you there. There's a post up about uh, the shackle chakra now. So see you there.